So I'm strolling through uh, Market Watch as I usually am, and this story actually caught my attention uh, a couple days ago, to be honest with you. But it says, is 72 months too long for a car loan? The problems with long-term loans. And it goes on to say that 72 months is six years, which we all know that, well, during my day when I was coming up, um, because I was born in 1982, so I'm 40 now. But when I first started coming of age and, you know, during my 18, 19, uh, 20 years old and the early 2000s, the norm was 60 months for a car loan. Now, as I've gotten older and become a little bit more educated, obviously, I realize that um, all of it is egregious depending on uh, what your interest rate is. But we're going to dive into this story a little bit, and then I'm going to give you my thoughts as to why you're going about doing this wrong and 96 month car loans are something that's becoming normal because the prices is going higher and people's specifically their wages aren't necessarily going up to meet the rate of inflation but we're going to dive into that all right so it says the issue with taking the one size fits all approach to a topic like the right car loan length is that it doesn't take into account well you in other words your age monthly bu budget credit worthiness and so forth is different than your neighbor's situation. If your credit score is 750 and you have a completely different perspective on borrowing money than your neighbor um, with a seven with a 600 credit score, and so it goes on to you know highlight the different things like buying cars on credit and things like that. But let's break this down, right? So you always gotta have that new thing. I personally always gotta have that new thing, but I didn't have to have that new thing before I got the resources to be able to do so, right? And this is why y'all need to be able to join the Patreon because we got a completely different way of looking at things. We don't look at things based off of what the normal everyday person looks at it or under a duress mindset, we look at it from an abundance perspective, but I'll explain that in a second. So it says, we aim to provide general advice for the average borrower, but even if you're on far extremes of the credit score bail curve above 800 or below 500, you can still benefit from the advice that's, been, that's presented here. So let's let's look at what they're saying. Uh, current auto market is affected by a worldwide chip shortage, uh, breakdowns in the supply chain. Um, and then it goes on to say that that basically demand is up because supply is low. And whereas automakers usually would have um, a lot of different vehicles on a lot, mostly sometimes around 30 to 60 days worth of inventory and sometimes 90 to 120, depending on the type of car that you're looking for. Um, that's all going away and the pandemic has upended things because they're starting to take more of a, a Tesla model approach. So sometimes doing away with the dealer altogether. I know Cadillac specifically was offering dealer buyouts for those that didn't want to transition over into the electrification uh, renaissance that's taking place right now. And um, you have a lot of people or a lot of uh, individual buyers now starting to transition over in EVs. I know the Ford Lightning is as hot as ever. I'm personally waiting on a Cybertruck. Um, but it says, why buy a car on credit? And so it breaks down that less than 16% of new car purchases um, um, are paid for in cash, cash transactions. For the other 84% of us, uh, that means borrowing money from a lender to pay it back month by month until the loan is paid in full. Now, the bank's bank on this, right? Because the banks are looking for you to finance because they make money off of you paying the interest on a loan. So they're the servicer of the loan. So translation to break it down in layman's terms, you pay your monthly payment. They loan you some money based off of your credit worthiness. They need you to go into this credit, you know, gamification, which is basically credit and that they're trying to assess whether or not you're going to pay your bills on time. They don't really care what your budget is. They don't really care any of that, so on and so forth. Of course, they're going to you know, ask you questions as far as, you know, what do you do for a living, how much you make, and they're trying to you know, assess whether or not you're going to pay it back. But your credit score and your credit worthiness is largely the thing that they lean on, right? It's the gamification of money. And then uh, you pay these interest rates, and depending on how high or low your credit score is, the ones with the lowest credit score pay the most interest. Well, the goal for me is to get people to eliminate the whole idea of having to finance a car in the first place, because why would you finance in a, a depreciating asset? If you're not writing it off, if you're not looking at it from a business perspective, then you shouldn't be financing it at all. As a matter of fact, I'm an advocate for paying cash 
And the problem with a lot of people, they say, well, I can't afford a new car in cash. Who said that you needed to afford a new car? You need to get something within your budget that can get you from point A to point B. And a lot of y'all live in areas or cities where you don't even need a car in the first place, but you're keeping up with the Joneses trying to impress people that don't even like you. All right, so let's go. Um, Experian reports the average new car loan amount during the fourth quarter of 2021 uh, was almost $40,000. It's pretty insane. It's pretty freaking insane. Like, I remember back in the 2008 crisis, like, there was a cash for clunkers, and they were trying to um, get people to get stimulated and start buying cars again, which basically showed me that most people were holding on to and buying things that they didn't need in the first place, right? Um, and the average monthly payment is $644 a month. Now, a lot of people like to argue me, and they say, well, Anton, uh, forty dollars and $50,000 is enough to be able to live on with a household because our parents did it and our great great grandparents did it. Six hundred and forty four dollars a month on average for the average household is insane. A. B. You still got to pay insurance. C. Maintenance. D. Gas. You're looking at well over a thousand dollars a month just to be able to get from point A to point B for most people. We're not even talking about the luxury market or anything. We're talking about the regular everyday cars that you're buying off the lot. That loan amount is up to twelve percent. From the same period, 2020. Talk about inflation. Average loan term in the fourth quarter of 2021 was almost 70 months with an average interest rate of 3.86%. Financing isn't as critical to most used car buyers. Uh, statistics show that nearly 61% of all fourth quarter uh, 2021 used car sales were cash transactions. Meaning, when people are buying cars used, most of the time they're buying it cash. During that same period, the average amount of finance on used cars was $27,000 uh, at 8.2% interest, which is, in my opinion, egregious. If you're not paying close to, or let's just say, 3% or below, you're catching the L. You're catching it. I don't like giving away any free money, uh, but just for the sake of giving it away, I'd rather give it to my bag chasers. Link to the Patreon is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. I'd rather give it to my bag chasers. I don't want to give it to the finance company. Um, but I think that this is egregious. That financing is more than $4,600 year over year increase. The average term for used car loan is 60. This is for a used car. This ain't even for a new car. 67 months at 488 a month. Y'all paying almost $500 a month for the next 67 months when you can literally almost be buying a, a, a car that way. Doesn't make it doesn't make sense to me. It, it's crazy, but let's continue. So, however, very few of us are average. Once we've decided to buy a new car and borrow the money to do so, we need to figure out what the length of the term of the loan will be. Now, this is one on one, y'all. Follow me here. The longer that you finance, the more that you pay. We talk about this with houses. We talk about this with credit cards. We talk about this with with cars, so on and so forth. The thing that you want to stay away from, if all, if at all possible, is having to finance at all, right? Which is why we want to lower the amount of money that you're spending on your personal stuff on a regular basis. And then we want to up the amount of money that you're putting into your investments. So let's go into uh, typical car, car loans, right? Um, most lenders will customize car loans, but that's an exception and not the norm. Most common term for car loans are 24 36, 48, and 60. This, these numbers right here was the norm. I had never heard of anything more than 60. And I thought that 60 was pretty much egregious, but I had never heard of anything more than 60, um, you know, prior to me maybe even getting into my 30s. Uh, 72 months and 84 months. What in the world is going on, Freaky Jason? Are you telling me that people that are watching this video right now, that it is a strong possibility that there are people that have 72 and 84 month loans. Check this one out, though. A few lenders will even go as high as 96 months. Bro, I wish I could lock somebody in for 96 months. I wish. To pay me for 96 months? That's crazy. You mean that you're going to pay me for me to front you up some money and you're going to pay me for the next 90? I get 96 payments? 
in which the majority of the early payments is interest and you don't even eat into the principal until much, much later into the, the payment. But see, this is the problem with people. They spend more time trying to figure out how it is that they can afford it by looking at it by the payment instead of looking at how much money they're giving it away for free. 96 months. It breaks it down. What's the difference between the 24-month loan and the 84-month loan? Simple answer is that the longer the term, the lower the monthly payment. That's how most people think. That's how most people think. Disadvantages of long-term loans. They go into, and I'm going to just break it down for you. We don't have to go through and read it or whatever like that. But the disadvantages is basically you paying way more money and you giving away more than double in interest to the servicer of the loan. So whoever it is that you got your loan financed through, I don't care who it is, is it GM Financial, Lexus, uh, Porsche, whatever it is that you're financing your car through, you're giving away free money. It breaks it down. Look, so although your monthly payments will be lower for a 72-month loan for a 48 uh, versus a 48-month one, you'll wind up paying more for the car. But people don't care about that. They only care about what it is that they can make as a payment instead of lowering the amount that they're financing if you have to finance a car which most of us don't. We just don't want to be looking busted and disgusted or we we trying to uh, impress other people instead of getting to that bag. Um, you pay more money over the life of the loan. Lenders raise interest rates, uh, the interest rate percentage as the length of the loan increase because and they know that you're going to pay it because it's within your budget. You pay a higher interest rate for a 36-month loan than a 24-month loan which basically tells you that when you get money, it costs you less and the money is cheaper for you to be able to do what you want to do. For example, using Auto Trader's monthly uh, car payment calculator, financing $20,000 of a car purchase at 4.5% for, uh, for 36 months will cost $1,400. So you're giving them $1,400 for free, basically, over uh, an interest over the life of the loan. If you finance the same item, um, at an interest rate for at the same interest rate, same interest rate. They ain't even raise the interest rate, even though interest rates goes up as you as the life of the loan is longer. Uh, same interest rate is 72 months. You'll spend basically double in interest. You're giving away more money to finance the exact same amount for a lower payment that basically finesses you into paying a little bit more or a lot more. That's an extra fourteen hundred dollars. Uh, that you will pay for the car. And if the interest rate itself doesn't increase uh, with the long term. Is this not something that we should be having a conversation about, ladies and gentlemen? Isn't this, is this not something that we need to be paying attention to? Please, you guys, I'm begging you. Do the thing that's in your best interest and stop giving away free money to people that is not adding value into your life. The banks are licking their chops and they can't wait to give you a 96 month. What's next? 108, 120. We're going to double it from the 60. So basically you're paying 10 years, the equivalent of buying a house for a car. Don't do that. Make sure you tap into the Patreon. Link is in the description as well as pinned to the top of the chat. Uh, we're going to start doing things a little bit differently. We're going to start getting to that bag. We're going to start spending our time actually adding value. As a matter of fact, I just dropped the video today based off of the live stream that we did yesterday on the build a business where we're going through and I'm putting together, I showed them uh, or I went through their business plan and then I'm going to revise it and I'm going to drop the new business plan based off of what I usually submit um, into the Patreon. So you guys will be able to see that this upcoming week, but you could see the build a business part seven that we did yesterday where I show you the location. I do, I do a, a video walkthrough. I show you what we're investing in. I talk about the content creation space. I talk about the the coffee shop that we putting together, everything, right? And I'm putting my own money up, over $100,000 to be able to build this out for you guys, all right? So listen, we got to start doing the thing that's in our best interest and stop fumbling the bag. If you need to get in touch with me personally, email me at antondaniels413 at gmail.com and we're going to get it popping. I love you, I appreciate you, but I need you to do me one more favor before we get up out of here. Make sure you share this with your family and friends. Hit a like for the YouTube algorithm. And then make sure you turn on your notifications. We don't want to be successful by ourselves. I love you guys. I appreciate you. Hopefully you continue to get value out of these live streams and uh, these videos. I'm going to talk to you guys later. Peace.